All right, special barbarian hour here. We've been off for a couple of uh, months, and now we're going to jump right back into it, right at the start of the wrestling season here. Coach, new coach, new head coach of the Lake Erie Storm in Painesville, Ohio, Boomer Fetchko. Coach Fetchko, how are you doing tonight? Doing well, my man. You have me on here. Yeah, uh, it's great to have you on. It's great to see you back in wrestling. Uh, you were at Cleveland State for how many years uh three you're three years there and then you you have quite the wrestling journey right you have been around the block you actually were out with pack at legends of gold for a minute weren't you uh so actually terry pack was my very first boss um in quincy california after i graduated college and then we were there for a year um and then actually i Kind of, I went to South Dakota with him. I went to go be a grad assistant at Dakota Wesleyan, and he opened up Legends of Gold about an hour and a hour and a half from there. So I kind of helped him, helped him, you know, get it started. I mean, he did he did a majority of it, but I was kind of just as you know an assistant for him as he got it going. So you were there when he bought that facility because it was like an old Lutheran home slash elementary school. And he, dude, have you been out there? Have you seen what it's become? It's incredible. Um, I haven't been out there since he has the new wrestling room. Um, but like just to so I mean, just to show you how far it's come, his very first wrestling room, we didn't even have wall mats. We put up like plywood on the walls and like carpet like over top of it. Down in that little gym where the sauna is. Like that's that where the was wrestling, our wrestling room. room. That's the weight room now. Yeah, yeah. That was our wrestling room. Um, and him and I just ran camps pretty much for a few months that summer, um, trying to get it going and people were having a great experience and it blew up, I mean, really quick and it's amazing, you know, now with what he's got. So the journey for you though, you went to two, you went to a D three, you're a D two all American, right? Mm -hmm. And a D three all American, right? Uh, just a qualifier D three. Qualifier and D three. So you wrestled D2, you wrestled NCAA D2, All-American. Where was it, Ashland? Finley. Finley. So I, I did not mean to confuse that. Sorry, I know that that's fighting words. Okay. No, so it's all Finley, good. Finley, then you qualified. You tr did you graduate transfer to Heidelberg? I just finished up there. You finished up there. Okay. So then from there, wait, high school, you went to Brunswick and North Royalton. Isn't that right? Yeah, I went to North Royalton, and then my I ended up graduating from Brunswick. Okay, where did you, you place at state in both places? Uh just my just at Royalton. Royalton, okay. Where were you when you would come to Burnett's camps as like a little guy? Oh, uh, I was at Royalton. You were at Royalton, and you were a peanut for a one hundred three pounder, weren't you? I mean, I think the first time I didn't even start wrestling until eighth grade, and I think. I, the weight class was 80 and I think I weighed 62 or 63. Um, and that was the first time I, I met you. I was out at Burnett's camp. I remember Scotty's like, you gotta see this dude break dance, boomer, break dance, break dance. And you did the break dance. Dude, you're really good at break dancing. Used to be, used to be. Listen, when your guys see this, will you bust a move for them? I had, I'm 35 now. The last time I tried was about 10 years ago and I messed my face up real bad. So <laughs> we, uh, we hung, we hung the shoes up. We hung the shoes up. I love up. it. I love it. So I remember you were just so small for the weight. Like you were tiny going into high school while wow, you started wrestling in eighth grade. I did not realize mm -hmm. that. I thought maybe you were like a sixth grader or something. Cause you were so small when you came out there. I remember. Yeah, no, I didn't make the basketball team and figured I'd give wrestling a shot. That worked out for you. <laughs> worked out for you pretty good. And then, okay, so what was the progression from Royalton? Where did you start? Where did you start? Where did you finish? Um, yeah, you know, ended up, um, we had some coaching changes at Royalton and um, just some different partners and, and just had a, a really good opportunity, um, you know, at Brunswick and, and, and my senior, so went over the, went over there. Um, and then, yeah, so you're asking like, where did I finish as far as to where I am now? Yeah. What, no, but where did you, journey. like, where did you start you 14 or 13? Cause you were so small as an eighth grader. How old were you 
when you Came started, 14 line. or 13? Yeah, I mean, I had to be so probably 13, probably 13 years old. What's crazy for me, because I can't put everybody in sequence, I can't keep the ages of you guys. So are you Danny Mitchell's age or are you younger? Uh, we are, uh, we graduated here, so we're the same age. I don't know if, if you know, who's like a couple o- months six older. or 07? Oh, we, oh, 05 from high school. Oh, oh 05 God. from high school. It's crazy, oh right? Listen, I was seven years out of high school at that point, and I remember just like torturing you poor guys like at Piecraft's barn, like either out in the yeah. orchard. Where did you, where did I used to run you guys on the road? I uh, know uh, through through uh, through the back through the orchard and everything like that, and you always you always uh, won every run. <laughs> uh, listen, my knees feel it now, and I'm a 255 pound man, and I can feel it. Trust me. I remember when you still had it, though. Yeah. Well, um, you had such a just. It's like been an interesting journey, and then right out of the gate, you went from high school. You went from graduated from Brunswick, then you went to Finley right out of the gate, right? Yeah. What weight did you all American at Finley? I want to say 125, but that doesn't sound right. Yeah, it was. It was 125. And then how many years at Finley? A uh, year. You were only there. You you were a fresh true freshman all American? Mm-hmm. No way. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. And then who did you wrestle with that's like is like Coach Garrow, uh, the Tiffin head coach? Were you and him teammates or is he a younger? Yeah, so he um, he was at 149 that year. He won one nationals as a sophomore. Um, Andy Uhl was at 133. He uh, was returning national champ. He took second that year. And then um, Clint Clint Salisbury was at 184. He was a senior, and he was an All American that that year. So we only had four qualifiers that year, but we all All American. And did I think we took seventh trophy? that year. I was gonna say, did you get it? You're close to getting a team trophy then. We yeah, I, 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 we didn't. I think we were seventh. Um, Maybe six, maybe eight, somewhere right in there. Right. So top ten. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Uh so North the other North Royalton guy, right? Yeah. Coach mm-hmm. Nelson, right? Yep. Coach Nelson, you are both North Royalton, both state placers. He's a couple times state champ at North Royalton. You're a state placer there. Um, and then he just he's done a great job. Why the move from Finley then to Heidelberg? Yeah. So basically I had a, I ended up getting two surgeries in college. Um, and I was getting one after that, after that year. And, you know, it was kind of one of those things where, um, him and I have a great relationship now. He's actually helped me a lot in my transition over at Lake Erie. Um, and, uh, we just, you know, I had some things, uh, as far as scholarships, scholarship wise, um, you know, through financial aid and stuff like that, that I was getting where, Basically, if I didn't graduate in four years, that was all going to drop. And so um, not 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 through not through wrestling or anything like that, scholarship wise, but just through financial aid. And a lot of people don't know this, but in, and I don't know where they're at now, but they were very underfunded. I want to say like they had like two point two scholarships or something like that. I, dude, um, I've heard they've had one scholarship years where they've had one scholarship. at Finley. Yeah. Yeah. And so what what Coach Nelson has done there is just unbelievable. It's so, incredible. You know, basically, I was going to have to go up. You know, we talked about red shirting because, again, you know, Andy Ull was, you know, a two time finalist there. Um, you know, and for me, red shirting wasn't really an option just because of the fact of, you know, I was going to have all this financial aid dropped just the way that it kind of worked out after four years. Um, so, because of that, it was kind of like, you know, it, it just didn't really work out. Um, and, um, you know, it is what it is, but him and I, you know, we're on the same page now and have a great relationship. And like I said, he's, he's really helped me with my transition at Lake Erie. Um, and I'm very grateful, you know, you know, for him. Was coach Miller at, uh, Heidelberg when you went, he was, he was the head coach. He's like the athletic director or something. Now I want to say, uh, I think he's assistant, assistant and he's probably still the volleyball coach or something like that. Okay. So you go over there and it's a different deal. You go down to D3. Were you 25 or 33 there? 33 and then 41 my last year. Okay. So it's just like. You got to remember that because you, that was the year you gave me all that, all that. uh, You kept making fun of me because I was so small for the weight. (laughs) Itty bitty dude. Like I just remember you being like this 60 pound kid coming and break dancing at Burnett's and then being so small for 103. What did you wrestle as a senior? 12? 
19. 19, yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't believe that you ever grew into that. It was wild because now as a man, you're not like a little tiny dude. You know what I mean? You're not like a big guy still, but like, it's just wild to think how tiny you were as an eighth grader because that's a big thing, man. What would you say to like a kid now? Because there's a lot of these kids who are they're trying to get up to 106. And then you got a guy like a Barrick Jordan, you know, the best guy in the country is in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Was it Graham? And that guy's massive. He's won everything. Mm -hmm. He's massive. You're a guy going out to get your 80 pounds soaking wet. What do you say to kids who are like are not grown into the weight yet and who are like, you know, they're 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 late bloomers or whatever it may be? What do you say to them? Yeah. It takes time, you know, and, and and I know that might sound cliche and like, you know, people say, oh, that's what everybody says, but it, but it's true. You know, it takes time. You know, you go through the process and, you know, when your opportunity comes, you know, just, just keep plugging away. And when it comes, you'll be able to take advantage of it, you know, um, and those, you know, I, I think those, you know, hard knocks that you take, you know, when you're losing just because you're, you're, you're small, you're too small for the weight, you know, all of a sudden you grow into that weight it's, it's not like you were a bad wrestler before you were just losing based off of size and strength. Right. Um, and so once you, and that's, you know, size is something that, you know, it's, it's hard to control at that age. Right. So once you grow into that weight though, I mean, in all reality, you know, good things are going to happen. It's just wild to see some of the people. Cause I, I do all the OEC events for, for Jared Opper and um, the OEC is a big part of what I do. And I see, I watch these cause I track them all the way up from, you know, grade school to going into high school. And some of them are really good for their age group and their weight class, but then they're, they get to high school and then these weird, they're a tween or size, they're not big enough. And a lot mm. of people that it, it like crushes them, like you're saying, it's a long game, you know, you got to be patient. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be, um, especially it, it's out of your control. Right. You know, so um, sometimes it, 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 things just take time. And again, you know, if, if you don't, if you're not patient with it and you give up on it when your, your opportunity is never going to come, you know? So if you stay patient with it and, you know, you just keep believing. And then when you do grow into it and your opportunity is there, you have, you, you have a great chance of taking advantage of it and, and being successful. So from Heidelberg, first of all, what degree did you get from Heidelberg? Uh, business administration. So, so business administration, what, how, what, where do you go from there to what takes you to California from there? Did you go right from there to California? Yeah. So, um, you know, was looking at some, some, I want, I knew I wanted to get into coaching, you know, that was, you know, that's, that's been my passion, you know? Um, and so, you know, basically I think back then it was the math.com. That's when all the jobs are on. Right. So, you know, you know, you're applying for every single job out there. Right. And, um, this high school, I, I really wanted to get into college, but, um, somebody had told me, I forget who it was. They said, Hey, there's this high school job open up, opened up in, in California. You should take a look at it. And I'm like, okay, I'll take a quick look. You know, I didn't really want to, you know, coach high school. I wanted to, you know, coach college. But when I, when I saw who, you know, was making the hire, it, it was Terry Pack. So, you know, I did my research on him and I'm like, man, this guy's national college coach of the year, you know, won some junior college titles, you know, um, brought in, you know, top recruiting classes in the country. I'm sitting there thinking, you know what, I'd be silly not to at least throw my name, name in the hat. Right. So I did. And, um, it was, um, it, it was kind of a long process. Um, you know, I think, you know, you, you graduate early May. Um, I, I remember moving, you know, moving out of college, moving back home. And then I don't even think I went out there for an interview until like late July. I mean, it, it was kind of a long process. There were a lot of conversations, um, you know, on the phone with, with, with Terry and I, um, and I liked everything he said. And, and just basically he kind of had, you know, you know, an idea of the path, you know, with everything of what he wanted to do and like, you know, whoever he brought in, they were going to go this path, you know, um, it, 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 it ended up never happening. You know, I mean, we ended up taking like a complete, you know, uh, U-turn and, and going to Legends of Gold and all that stuff, which ended up being great. But I just liked, you know, what he, you know, everything, you know, his vision with everything. And um, it, it really was going to give me an opportunity to, to learn and, you know, in, in coaching. So uh, I felt, you know, I needed to hop on it. Off the top of my head, he's the only – he coached Juco. He won with Neosho in like 2000, I want to say. Mm. Uh, that's the only level you haven't coached at. 
You've done D1, D2, D3, NAI. No, I haven't. I haven't done D3. I haven't done D3. Oh, you and wrestled. My, you wrestled D3. Rest, yeah, the only level you first. haven't either competed or coached it's, at. Yeah. This is that level. You didn't. You, didn't, you haven't done any JUCO. That's what I meant to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have you know, not, correct. You have been at every level in wrestling now. Mm -hmm. but, like that leads me. You know, you go to Dakota Westland. Were you this there two years as GA? Yeah, two years as a grad assistant. And then from Dakota Westland, did you go to Buffalo? Bloomsburg. You went went to, to Bloomsburg. Yep. And then did uh, you follow Coach John from Bloomsburg to no, Buffalo? No. So it was, it was, it was kind of um, it was kind of weird. So we went to Bloomsburg and um he went to Buffalo right after. So and I was he had asked me to go with them. I had thought about it really hard. Um, but I kind of had some things going on back home that I needed to be there for. Um, with my family. So uh, I ended up going back home, I think for about nine months, maybe 10 months, um, and just helped out at Brunswick High School, um, you know, got a job and was helping out at Brunswick High School. And then um, the AD at Dakota Wesleyan had called me and said, hey, you know, our head coach is going to be leaving. He gave us several months notice. We'd love for you to come back out here um, and, and take over the program. And so that's when I went back to Dakota Wesleyan for the second time. Where is Dakota Westland? Mitchell, South Dakota. Mitchell, South Dakota. So how long did you go back there for? I was back there, um, you know, probably about, I think about a year and a half. I think I went in in March. I think I went back out there in March. And, um, you know, I kind of kicked myself in the, in the, you know, what for not going to Buffalo. I don't regret going back home. Cause again, I had to take care of some things with my family and I'm glad that I did. But I just kind of felt like I missed out on an opportunity. And I thought, you know, maybe there, there could have been a way I could have did both. You know what I mean? Um, and I didn't really look at that. Um, and so I, I, you know, you know, kept those conversations up with, 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 with Coach Stutzman. Um, and basically, you know, knew I always wanted to get back to where he was. And uh, it was about. I got the, I got to South Dakota after the season. So I went through that spring all summer, one whole year. And then, you know, he had, he had the job opened up at Buffalo and that's when I, you know, moved, moved across country over to Buffalo, New York. So you're in Buffalo for what, like five years, three years, three years, three years in Buffalo. Then you go from Buffalo and you come back to Cleveland, correct? Yep. Buffalo. To Cleveland, where is there ever a pause in there, like that nine month pause where you just at Brunswick, or were you, did you go right from Buffalo to Cleveland State? Right from, right from um, Buffalo to Cleveland. Okay, so three years at CSU, and then at CSU they literally cut the position. They yeah. they, they 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 did they no longer had funding for the position, and you're just like, okay. What do you do for a year of your life outside of wrestling? It's different. It's a way different year than the year when you went back and you wrestled and probably practiced every day at, at Brunswick High School between yeah. Bloomsburg and Dakota Westland, right? But, like, yeah. what do you do for that year? You know, you're in a new house. We talked about it. You and I talked, like, you are trying to get in other places. But what do you do for a year? How do you bide your time and you stay in Northeast Ohio? Nothing drug you out of Northeast Ohio. And then, obviously, Lake Erie College, where you're now the new head coach comes up but what do you do for a year of your life yeah I mean basically you know it's it's end of May and you know you find this out it was two weeks before my wedding you know um I'm getting ready to go on my honeymoon you know um so worst timing ever um and you know having to come home and tell my wife or well my fiance at the time like hey you know when we get back when we get back from our honeymoon you know I don't I don't have a job you know so we just built this house. Um, we had just gotten a dog, like, I think probably within a year before this, um, you know, so we, we built a house cause we kind of expected on being here, you know? So, um, you know, and, and anybody in wrestling knows there's no jobs open at that point in time and, you know, going into June. Um, so really, I really didn't know what was going to happen. Um, and, you know, I, I kind of just, you know, kept the faith and, and, you know, figured, you know, Hey, something, something will work out. And, um, it was a long time. I don't even think I got a job until November. Um, and it's not like, Hey, I had interviews and didn't, I mean, the phone, you know, I'm not applying for wrestling jobs at this point. Right. Cause there are none, 
you yeah. know what I mean? I mean, I, I, I threw my name in the hat for a few, but you know, it, it didn't work out. It is what it is. And so now I'm trying to apply for jobs that, I mean, I don't have any experience in anything other than wrestling, right. Coaching wrestling. And I honestly think like a lot of employers would just, they look at your resume. Oh, wrestling coach. Oh, next. You know, they don't look at, you know, they don't read everything on there seeing, you know, like the administrative stuff that you do and things like that. So it wasn't like, oh, hey, I was turning jobs down. The phone wasn't even ringing, you know. Um, so then um, I got a call one day from Drew Periano, um, you know, who, I, who I've who i known for a long time. And he had said, you know, hey, we he was working for NCSA, um, a recruiting company, you know, helping kids and, and their families through the recruiting process. And so. Um, uh, you know, basically he said, Hey, they had an opening and he's like, you know, what do you want to do? And I said, well, you know, I, I mean, I, I didn't want to leave college coaching, you know? And I said, but I'm not, I'm not really sure. Like, I don't, I don't know where to go from here. So um, he kind of gave me a, 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 some good advice and uh, ended up working out. So I ended up working at NCSA um, for, I say there, I started in November and I went to end of July, early August. Um, before I, before I went over to Lake Erie. Um, but I, I figured it was a good thing just because it kept me in the sport um, in a way, as far as, you know, watching film, you know, helping kids through the recruiting process, things like that. Um, so I was still involved with wrestling, not in the way that I had been in before, but it still kept me around the sport. Um, and, um, you know, it ended up working out where, you know, Lake Erie, you know, ended up, you know, working out, you know, for me. So you've been through all levels of the recruiting process at, at, at everything, right? Like literally D1, D2, D3, NAIA. Pac, we'll, we'll just plug you in with Pac's experience from JUCO. He probably talked about it a lot. I loved hearing it. Listen, <laughs> Terry Pac's got some of the greatest Neosho Iowa Central Junior College stories I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Like he, you ever tell you the story about how they got like a bunch of trailers? And they circled all the trailers up and all the wrestlers lived in this like trailer village. Did he ever tell mm -hmm. you that? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Him amazing. and Ostrander, man. Him and him and uh, Mark Ostrander. Yeah. Um, Mark. Yeah. It was Ostrander. <laughs> Iowa central, right? Yep. Yep. Yes. Oh, he tells these stories. Cause he got, he got Dino Taylor and Dino mm -hmm. Taylor and I grew up together. Dino split matches with Kane Velasquez. Yep. Would, would you ever believe that Dean Taylor if you hold on, if you saw Dean Taylor, <laughs> I still see him all the time. He's like the coolest, most laid back guy ever. He was an absolute killer. Terry, Terry like tells that. a story all the time about how he went to go recruit Dean Taylor and he's, he sees these two kids on the mat and there's this, <laughs> there's this kid, you know, and it ends up being Dean Taylor. And then there's this other kid who's just a physical specimen yeah. and the kids, a physical specimen just gets molly -whopped bad. And Crazy. Terry thought that was Dean Taylor. And he's like, why am I recruiting this kid? This kid is like, and hey, somebody told like, no, it's that, the that's other guy's Dean Taylor, Taylor. The guy that doesn't look like much. Hey, <laughs> yeah. uh, Kevin Roberts went to pick him up from the Spokane airport when he was uh, working at uh, North Idaho. And he said yeah. he's looking around and he's like, <laughs> I saw some guy with like a duffel bag. And I was like looking around for like this big, you know, stud. And he's like, <laughs> finally he went up to him and he's like, Hey man, uh, I'm looking for this guy, a high school kid. We're recruiting him. His name's Dean Taylor. And he's like, Oh yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, can't Dean judge Taylor, a book by his cover. I'm going to tell you this right now. He's the guy that if he's at a bar, He's the first guy that somebody thinks they want to mess with, but then figures out it was actually the last person they should have messed yeah. with. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he still was an animal, man. Freak, he was man. an he's animal. Still a freak. Yeah. Uh, so he tells the story. I think he lost to Kane Velasquez in like tie breaks. He lost to Kane, but he beat him earlier in the year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. And then they, but they won that year. He had two Olympians, two like Romanian Olympians, Nemanescu or, I don't know if I'm saying the name right, but like one of them. No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. You're right though. Yeah. I think um, that's did. the name. Um, mm -hmm. One of them is still like the groundskeeper at Neosho. Something crazy like that. Yeah. Yeah. I and I think that. the other one's like doing hunting tours or something out it's in Montana. Like awesome. or well, something. they're living the American dream. First off, they're living the American dream because Terry Pack yeah. brought them over 
what would they mm-hmm. be doing uh, in Romania? I, I, I don't know. Not what they're doing know. here and living a, you know, owning private property and doing what they want to do. But dude, at all levels, right? When we talk about this, all yeah. levels, recruiting, recruiting's key. You guys are pretty well funded at Lake Erie College, right? You guys are pretty well funded as far as scholarship money. Would you agree with that statement? Uh, yeah, we, we, we are. We're on, a, we're on a different model, though. Um, it's not just straight up um, like Division One would be where, you know, even if you have six scholarships, it's not just straight up. We're on a different uh, a model called NTR. Um, so um, basically, you know, it's, it's what people are, are paying to go to school there. Um, so it's kind of based off of an average, but not an average that you give out. It's basically an average of what people are going to pay to come in. So, um, so yeah, we're funded pretty well, but it's, it's a little diff. It's a different model though. Can you go get a Keller if you want to, can you go get a guy? Can you go get a Joey Davis? Can you go get, I mean, can you go get like what coach Guerra was, can, you know, he was, was he a two-time national champion Finley? Can you go get a guy like a caliber guy like that? Or like a, yeah, like a yeah, Nick Mason, 100%. you know what I mean? Can you go mm-hmm. get a, a blue chip guy who you can bring in and, and make sure they get all four years of school paid for? Can you do that? Yes. Um, it very difficult, but yes, you can do it. Cause you're balancing out all these other different things of the economics of the school roster numbers and the amount of people that you are able to get into the school and how many, how much money you're giving out compared to how much money is bringing, being brought in. I understand the financial model of it. Yeah. It's something to that nature. I know that it's something like that. Coach Breeze did a really good job of explaining things. Coach Breeze, when he moved um, from BDU from Buena Vista, he stayed with me for a couple of months. I mean, he wasn't here very often, but he's a really good guy. And I'm, and by the looks of it, he left you a pretty good team. You got three guys who have all American before on the team right now. Am I correct? Yeah. So we had, when I got there, um, we had lost three guys didn't come back to school. Um, before I, I believe it was in the transition from when got it. Coach Reed left. So I took the job. We had three guys not return. Uh, one of them was a returning national qualifier. Yeah. Um, and then we do have an all American or we have, um, we have three all Americans on the roster right now, uh, two that were returners and then one that transferred in. Um, he's an all American two years ago. One of our returners though, he is, um, he's out the year though, due to, uh, he had surgery. Okay. So you are, you do have, you will potentially have two all Americans in the lineup this year with yeah. the potential. Will the third all is who's the all American who's out right now? Uh, Corey Gamut, 133. The Gam- Gamut's massive, by the way. Mm-hmm. Like big, long, lanky dude. He's huge for the weight. Um, Because I do some of your guys' matches. Um, Looks like I'm going to be doing some of your matches this year. Yeah, um, yeah. What's the one on the 4th? What's the uh, the uh, November 4th? John Carroll, uh, extra countable matches. It was something that they kind of had um done in the years past. And when I got there, the schedule was already set. So it'll be us and John Carroll. It, it, to best describe it, it's like the, you know, the COVID year where there was no team score, yeah. just, you know, get a bunch of matches. That's what we're starting off with. Yeah. I'm going to put it, uh, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I, I dealt with you a lot during the COVID year because mm-hmm. I was doing all the Cleveland state stuff. I'd come to most of your guys' home matches. Obviously, you know, who likes to take care of business for me when I can, you know, and they'll be taking care of business at your place. Right. Guys say yep. defense. So shout out. Um, but I did a lot of Cleveland state. I did more Cleveland state stuff. Then I did Kent State stuff that one year. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I, I want to say it was your last year at at um, CSU. You guys yep. wrestled Central Michigan really, really tough to a five five split. And I did the ESPN broadcast. That yep. was listen. You guys had a really good team that year. We did. What is it like to be back in the grind? And how good do you feel being at the head of the table now? Being you know, this is your second head coaching job because were you you were the head coach at Dakota Wesleyan, right? Correct. Yeah. So, so it's not like this is new to you. you've done this before. You've been the guy who's been responsible for travel, gear, the room, assistance, you name it, making guys sure guys are eligible. You've been there, but how good does it feel to be back in wrestling for you? Uh, I mean, it, it means everything in the world to me. You know, again, this isn't a this is my passion. You know, it's not a job. You know, yeah, it is a career, but most importantly, it's my passion. And I've been really blessed to be able to do this for a living. And so, you know, that, I mean, let's be honest, get that got taken from me, you know? And so um, it, it was, it was, it was hard being out, 
you know? And so I was trying to do everything I could to get back in and, you know, really blessed for the, for the opportunity at Lake Erie. Um, you know, I'm glad, I, I think probably, and, and people ask me all the time, you know, what was the year? And, and you know, I, I've, I've been, and you've, you've mentioned a bunch of guys already like Terry Peck, you know, coach Stutzman, Josh Moore. Right. Um, but I've learned a lot from everybody, but that year and a half of being a head coach and, you know, I was young. I think I was, I don't know if I was 25, 26, you know, right in there. Um, I learned a ton. Um, and, you know, that really, I think kind of, I think it made me a better assistant coach um, after that, because it, you know, I, I kind of, I really understood what head coaches go through. And so I think that's really kind of helped me for this, this, uh, you know, this time around being a head coach again as well. So you guys have a pretty unique situation, how your, uh, your office is set up, your wrestling rooms upstairs, your locker rooms right there. It's like a really centralized location and mm -hmm. Lake Erie college is pretty cool. It's right in Painesville. I actually drove by today cause I was doing some visits at some, uh, places of employment for my students. And I drove by and I was like, it's kind of cool how it's set up. You're on Menor Avenue and poof, this university pops up or college pops up. Mm -hmm. And then you drive by it. Then all of a sudden you're back, you're in Painesville and then Menor, and it's all right there. You're not too far from Cleveland, but what is it like to recruit there? I'm guessing you haven't done a ton of it yet, but what do you, what do you tell people about Lake Erie college in Painesville, Ohio? How do you recruit kids there? it's a great place, you know, um, and it's, we're, a, we're a unique place. You know, we have our own standalone facility, which is great. Um, and, you know, the things that we're able to do there, um, I think are really beneficial for our guys and the guys who are recruiting. Um, our culture right now is unbelievable. Um, when I got there, you know, day one, you know, kind of going over the expectations with these guys, what I expected of them and, and, you know, in all aspects of, of life, you know, uh, academically, athletically, and socially. Um, and they, they all, we have 28 guys on the roster. They all bought in day one and just done an, again, an unbelievable job. I'm so proud of them and where they're at. And, um, they make my, they make my life easy. You did not get to pick the coaching staff. It was already set for you, right? The coaching staff was already mm -hmm. there. Coach Bearden is the guy who I've been communicating with coach mm -hmm. Bearden. Uh, he's really unique because coach breeze told me about him and he's a, he carried over from coach breeze but he's a guy that feels like he just has a real passion for wrestling. He's in a, in a pretty big fight for his life right now. That guy, mm -hmm. I I've heard nothing but great things about him. What's it like having coach Bearden and who are the other assistants on staff for you? Yeah. I mean, coach Bearden is great. Um, you know, right now, like you said, he's um, unfortunately he was diagnosed with leukemia uh, several months ago. Uh, I believe right before I got hired. Um, so I, I'm going to say June or July, somewhere in there. Um, and, uh, he's doing, he's crushing it. Um, he's way ahead of schedule from what he's telling me. Um, they're, they're skipping some steps in his recovery. He's just doing so well. Um, so, you know, that's, that's huge. Um, he, he's around, you know, not as much as I'm sure he wants to be. Um, you know, and I kind of told him, you know, when I took over, like, Hey, you know, I, I think the, the biggest thing you, you need to concentrate on it is your health. Right. You know, and he's, um, again, he's just doing great. So he's around when he can. And when he is, he's, he's all smiles, um, you know, joke around with the guys, uh, you know, keeps everything light. He, so, um, you know, he, he still put together our golf outing, you know, he had kind of did that. Um, and then, you know, got diagnosed. Right. And we kind of had to postpone it and things like that and picked it right back up, rescheduled it. And I mean, he, he did it all and did an unbelievable job, you know, so he, he he's doing well. Um, and then we have um, Ronnie D'Amico, uh, a grad assistant. He's actually around for one year. Um, so he uh, grad transferred. Uh, he had one year of eligibility left, wrestled at, um, you know, Lake Erie and started his master's degree. So he's finishing up. And then John Penfold, um, he graduated from Lake Erie, um, did a year of his master's with another year of eligibility. And then now he is our other grad assistant and he's finishing up his master's. He'll be here one more year. And then we have Chris Drage. Um, Chris is, um, he owns his own, uh, painting, uh, painting company and then, uh, fights MMA as well. He was an all American at Lake Erie two years ago. Um, so he's, he's one of our assistant coaches as well. Um, and he's coming in, he's, you know, he fighting MMA, he's training. So, you know, he comes in a couple days a week and, and, and goes with the guys really well as well. So that rounds out the staff for you, the, the, the Fitch Falcon Dreggy. Yep. The face puncher house painter. Yep. Want to know, by the way. Is he want to know? 
He's one to know. Uh, 34 seconds, rear naked choke. Nice. That's good. That's good. Uh, you know what? I was talking to, I do a Kent State podcast, and I had this guy on, um, Jake Ferry's 125 for Kent State, and mm-hmm. he's getting like a sports administration master's degree. He's already got an undergraduate degree in his sixth year, and I'm like, hey, what are you going to do when you grow up? And he's like, I'm going to fight MMA. I'm like, wait a minute. You went to college to get a graduate degree. You got an undergrad, a graduate degree. Now you're going to punch people in the face. And he started out, what's funny is he started out as a plumber. He started out as a plumber and then decided he wanted to wrestle Division I in college and he's from Boston. I was like, dude, you could have just been a plumber and punched people in the face after work. I'm like, what? Why would you go torture yourself in D1 wrestling? And go to college, which most I'm guessing most dudes who want to be plumbers don't love school to the point where they want to go get two degrees. I, I'm just, it's just me. I was raised by an iron worker. I'm just telling you, that's just not how many of them think, right? Right, right. Hey, uh, man, to each their own, to each their own, you know? Sure. But I'm like, come on, man. You can just punch people in the face with no degree. With, well, not alone, too. Let alone, too. But um, what is Lake Erie College really known for? What I know them for is, it was kind of wild what uh, what uh, Breeze told me is you guys have some like a twin scholarship or some crazy thing he was talking about. They they yeah he, <laughs> twins on the team, and it's like a two for one type deal for the twin thing. What is that? You know what that is? Yeah. So Lake Erie was founded by um, by twins, um, and they have uh, a twin scholar essentially. Um, it's buy one, get one. So, um, if you, if you're a twin, uh, what they do is that you each get instead of, okay, one pays full tuition, the other one doesn't pay anything. They just go half tuition for each. Um, but yeah, that is a thing. If you're a twin, um, half, you know, each, each of you get half tuition right out the gate. That, that's a pretty good deal. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh yeah, absolutely. If I had twins, they'd probably go there cause I teach right next to it. I'd probably just buy a house up there and my twins would go there, but I don't have twins. I got, I got a four and a six year old that I, I was late coming to the show because we had to have a wrestling match, but um, I ended up, <laughs> Who I, won? Ended up, I mean, I, not me. I get, I get, I end up being like the mat. I end up getting just beat up. My one guy's pretty, he's pretty tenacious with a half Nelson though. Comes out of that half Nelson a lot. So, but they're doing everything. My kids are doing everything. No kids for you yet. Right? Yeah. Not yet. We're trying, uh, hopefully okay. soon. Um, so yeah, we got a, uh, we got a 65 pound pit bull that keeps us pretty busy right now. Uh, yeah, I guess so. How is the commute from the West side to the East side? 54 minutes, one way, baby. Love it. Um, it's good. You know, um, I get to listen to uh, some podcasts on the way there and on the way home, like, like yours. Um, on top of that, you know, it, it kind of just gives me time to, um, on the way there, you know, I, I've got a practice plan, right. And, and, or no, you know, have a plan with what I'm getting done in the office, you know, every day for practice, things like that. Um, and it kind of, I think it just gives me a chance to go over it in my head make sure, okay, Hey, you know, you know, have a, have, have a strategy, have a game plan. Is this what I'm, you know, am I still good with this? Right. Um, and then on the way home, you know, it gives me a chance to kind of go over everything like, Hey, you know, how'd the guys look today? Do we need, do we need to push more? Uh, do we need to back off a little bit? Are there any changes we need to make? Hey, you know, you know, who am I calling tonight? You know, this and that. Um, and so it kind of just gives me some time to, you know, kind of just, you know, relax a little bit. And, um, you know, at the same time as well, just kind of, if, if it's a rough day or something like that, just, you know, cool off a little bit before I get home, which is good. Um, so it just depends, um, you know, what, what's going on and, and what's going through my mind, but it, it hasn't been too bad so far. 71 to 90 is that the way to go 71 to 90 to 2 71 to 90 to 2 so you go to 2 when it splits in euclid you go to 2 mm-hmm. okay and then you got a bunch of different options homes you can go you go 271 you can go 90 to 271 to 480 depending what the traffic is so you got a bunch of different ways to go right yeah, I come back home the same way that I go um that's that's the easiest um just with traffic um I learned once already. Um, if I don't leave before a certain time, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're hitting traffic. Line. And yeah, stop, we're, go, stop, go, stop, go. Yeah, yeah uh, two and a half hours. So, so okay. If you if you go at like five in the morning, it's forty five minutes, right? 
we'll go fifty. Yeah, fifty. Okay. Well, you're you're not going very fast. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I'm a little disappointed in you. I mean, that that's kind of kind of kind of uh, old man. My wife's there. in the other room. I don't want her to hear me saying <laughs> I'm going ninety. <laughs> okay. So schedule wise, where do you guys start mm-hmm. out this year? Uh, will I be at the first one with the John Carroll thing on, on the fourth? Man, we're trying to get you for for all ours, all four of them. Well, yeah, but, but where does the not? schedule start? Uh, uh, Friday, uh, November fourth. Yep, John Carroll, and then okay. our next home one isn't uh, until the second semester. In uh, February, I want to say it's January. So actually, this one, this is an awesome one. Uh, this is one you definitely want to be at. January sixth. It's a Friday night, six p.m. It's us in Cleveland State. And we're doing a takedown leukemia, takedown or your pin leukemia um, event. Um, we've got shirts made for Andrew Bearden where all the proceeds go to him and his family. Um, on top of that, we got singlets made for that night, um, you know, just for that. And I, I'm trying to, I wanted to do it with a local team to try to attract more people. Um, so that's, um, you know, talking with Josh Moore and everything, they were all about it. So um, looking forward to that. I think that's going to be a great event. Listen, here's what I found out. From a lot of, you know, I got a, a nephew who coaches D1. I talked to Coach Anderson. I do their podcast. That says a lot for Josh Moore because, as you know, for their power rating, it does nothing for them to come yeah. and wrestle D2 guys. Yeah, no, you're right. And I think, you know, talking with him and everything, you know, I think a lot of times, you know, just with the way things are right now, with especially some of the smaller schools, their budget, it's, it's hard to travel, you know, to some yeah. places. So, Um, you know, he had that weekend, that weekend open. Um, I actually think they may be going to, I think they might be wrestling at Edinburgh that weekend. Um, I think it's a tournament out there. Don't quote me on that. And so, um, it, it it was kind of on the way for him anyways. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we're talking with him, you know, it just kind of made sense for both of us. Um, and so it worked out well, and then we'll go to Cleveland state next year. Um, you know, obviously we'll, we'll put that on the schedule, um, for whatever event they want to put on. What's wild is, you know, you've done all the levels you've wrestled or either coached at all the levels, but Juco, uh, you know, everybody's so like D one frenzy, crazy. They only care, you know, example flow wrestling forever only cared about D one wrestling. And I would be doing D two and D three stuff and whatever I could do. Right. Cause I just love wrestling. And, they finally figured out like, oh, we're, we're cutting out half of our market by not covering, you know, D2, D3, yeah. NAIA, uh, JUCOs, which they started doing the JUCO finals. But long story short, you've been at all the levels. Is Obviously, everyone's going to tell you the D1 grinds the hardest grind, right? They're going to say that because the competition's higher. There's more scholarship athletes, right? But are all of them a total grind like everybody says the D1 is? Are they all a total grind every – Every different thing, NAI, D2, D3, everything you've been through, is it all a grind, the same type of grind? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I believe it is. And I think it depends on who's running the program. Um, I mean, I don't think I run Lake Erie any differently as far as a grind standpoint, differently than what Bloomsburg did and what Cleveland State did and what Buffalo did. Um, You know, there's differences in coaching styles and things like that. And, you know, but, I mean, we still get up. We still train twice a day. You know, um, we're still, you know, lifting weights, you know, in the morning, wrestling in the afternoon, running in the morning, wrestling in the afternoon, going on Saturdays. I mean, you know, I, I think it just depends. Um, I mean, you see there's programs all over all over the country in different divisions outside of Division One that, you know, coaches run it, you know, like a business, you know. And so, um, yeah, I mean, are there some programs that are maybe, you know, go a little bit lighter on some things? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but there's definitely programs out there that again, you know, grind it out just like the division one team, division one teams do. I mean, I know that lunatic up in Buffalo Stutzman, as I like to call him Nutsman, he likes to grind him a little extra hard, but I don't want to be too hard on the old Nutsman tonight. I'll leave Nutsman out of this. I, I like to put his name in my mouth to like fire a shot over his bow and maybe, maybe get a mean text message or an angry phone call, but I don't mind. I don't mind. I got ears. I'll listen to him. You know, I know that a lot of those guys push hard. And like, you know, you know, you were at Cleveland State, you were at Bloomsburg, you were at Buffalo. And, uh, you know, a lot of people already count them out. You go to the NCAA tournament, they're, they're wrestling a big time guy. They're counted out. They're counted out, man. I was on the mat at Buffalo when the dude lost the match to the Lehigh guy in overtime. 
Oh, were you, yeah, were you on Lancer. staff that year? Yeah, I was in the corner that year. Oh, that my was, dude. Dude, yeah. I, I don't know how he lost the match because he was winning in the third period. The guy No, snitched. he was losing. He was, he was losing, losing in the third. He got he got he went took bottom and got an escape. That's um, what it was. Yeah, he was. I think he got don't quote me on this. I think he was winning in the second and got reversed at the end, I think, or gave up a takedown at the end of the second to go down one. And then it was our choice. We took bottom and third and got out, but then we got taken down in overtime. I yeah. think that's how it played out. And he like snaked you too, I want to say. You were on, yeah, on a back did. door coming out the mm-hmm. back type deal. And the dude dive rolled and did his what Lehigh Valley thing. Was it Brown? Is that who it was? Am I right? Uh, Brian Lantry. He was our one thirty. No, no, no. Pounder. It was Lantry for them. Was the dude for Lehigh Brown? What was his name? Uh, Scotty Parker. Scotty Parker. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, dude. He was just like he sneaky PA. You dude. He snaked you. He got you. Mm-hmm. Is Lantry yeah. a PA guy though? Uh, no, he was a New York kid. New York kid, man, he wrestled really hard. A lot of those guys wrestled really hard, and I know you probably yeah. you can still feel it in your body how hard they wrestled. Every morning. Do you still wrestle as much as a 35-year-old man as a head coach now? Um, I, I'm on the mat a decent amount, probably not as much as I was when I was an assistant, you know, um, especially with taking over the program. Um, you know, I'm running practice a lot, but trying to also give, you know, Ronnie and John, because those guys, the GAs, they're they're there every day, right? Um, so I'm trying to give them opportunities to run practice and things like that as well. So I, I do try to get on the mat. Um, probably I'm not on as much as I like to. And, you know, once we kind of get going a little bit more, I will be. Um, one of the things is, is I've tried to just kind of go over a lot of basics, a lot of fundamentals, making sure we're doing things right. Um, just kind of how I go about things, I'm not trying to change guys styles by any means, you know, um, but, uh, just again, making sure we're going over the things we need to go over positions we're going to be in and doing everything right. So I spent a lot of time doing that so far. Um, so on the mat showing technique, things like that. Yes. As far as getting in there, um, you know, grinding every single day, haven't been doing that as much as I'd like to, but the, again, that'll probably change here. You know, now that we're ramping it up. Uh, you know, with, with season. The GMAC greater Midwest athletic conference. I want to say that I get that right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Coach breeze won it in his first year. Mm-hmm. I want to put that on you a little bit. I want to, I want to, I want to put some expectations on you. Do you have expectations? You got multiple all Americans returning into your lineup this year. It's a tough conference. Tiffin's yeah. in there. Finley's in there. It's a really, really, really solid conference. They have a dual meet championship. I believe. Um, I call so it's it different. Are it's they doing different. it? They're not doing yeah, it. So no. So last year it was a dual meet this year. It's a tournament and you're allowed to enter two guys. So they've kind of done it a couple different ways so far. Um, so yeah, this year it's a tournament and you're allowed to enter two at a weight. How do you, do you like that better than a dual meet format? It's my first year. Um, you know, so I'm good with it. I, I'm just a fan of dual meets overall, you know, so I, I, I like dual meets better personally. Um, and, and, and when it comes to, comes to this, yeah, I, I, I prefer to have a dual meet. When I did it, it was wild because it was a guy, the last guy on Jeff Breeze's roster, a dude who'd only been to like five practices and they just had brought him on the trip and he was a second semester guy. He went out and he got tacked. He didn't get pinned and that's why they won. Last year, um, obviously I wasn't there. They, I don't know who they were wrestling. It was tied, and in the tied, they thought they won on criteria. Were celebrating for thirty seconds, and then found out they lost. So sounds like it sounds like GMAX is is pretty exciting every year. So looking Dude, it's forward. It's really to it. good. And then now that Simcoe is not going to be there, I don't know if Grand Valley is going to come into it. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'll tell you what. That guy, he he gets pretty fired up. He gets. He gets at he gets nuts nutsman esque right at the level a little nutty a little crazy, uh. But yeah, it was at Tiffin and I was like, oh my god, dude! It was like they were almost brawling. Man, it was who what was the other? Who's the is, is Ashland in the GMAC? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, it's a really tough conference, dude. Yeah, uh, good. Ohio Valley, Ashland, Kentucky Westland, Finley, Tiffin, you guys. I'm, am I missing somebody? Uh, that might be it. That might be it. 
No, no. Uh, Alderson Brodus. Oh, yes, 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 yes. The Battlers. <laughs> That's right. The Battlers. They, were, they had a dude that was an All-American. He was, like, real tough. Like, eight yeah. four pounds. Like, dude was, like, real sneaky good. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I was, like, really just sneaky good. I liked it, you know, and it's obviously high-level wrestling. And um, I just I, – I enjoy that. When guys are going out there and they're scrapping, Simcoe is out of his mind. Um, Breeze was like, I can't even believe we won. <laughs> he couldn't believe they won. He was like, oh, yeah. won. I can't believe it. And a guy, a guy, uh, a guy who's been to five practices, uh, he got tech not pinned. That's why we won. Oh, they caught somebody too. They caught, so they, they were losing a match and pinned a guy. The, the lead, one of the lead twins pinned somebody. Found a way to win. Yeah. Found a way to win. Yeah. It was like a dude riding high and he caught him and pinned him. But, um, uh, yeah, you find a way to win. I, I like that. But where will that be this year? Do you know where GMAC's going to be? Uh, I believe it's at Ashland. Is that Ashland? Okay. So Coach Greenlee at Ohio U, he forever had graduate assistants. He, they never gave him a paid assistant. Do you think eventually in your tenure there that you're going to be able to try and get a paid assistant added? Or are they always going to keep you on the graduate, the graduate uh, student model? I mean, I hope so. I mean, it's something I'm pushing for, um, you know, talking with, you know, Coach Breeze, I know it's something he was pushing for, um, you know, and you look at other teams in our, in our conference, in our region, um, you know, teams we're recruiting against, competing against everything. They got full-time assistants, maybe not all of them, but a, a majority of them do, you know, so um, yeah, it, it's, that you know, and, and, and Ronnie and John are doing an awesome job. And so is, you know, Coach Drake and Coach Beard and, um, but you know, when you have a, a full-time assistant, I mean, that's just a night and day difference between that and a grad assistant position, just because of the fact it's full-time. Right. And, you know, and this is something that when you, I, I kind of noticed this years ago, when you post a job online, your candidate pool is completely different for a GA position and a full-time assistant position. Right. Um, you know, so um yeah i mean every program out there in the country wants a full-time assistant position i mean that's that's a no-brainer what's wild to me is we already know you and i already know who it is it's young 21 22 23 year old guy who just graduated from college who maybe was competing against these guys last year he's now going to come in and be coaching guys he competed against or competed with last year and that's a whole different dynamic like what you're saying you you were someone who was a journeyman assistant who went and moved all over the country so you obviously know what that takes and what that difference looks like i mean it's right i mean yeah 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 and i think it you know like like ronnie and john both you know wrestled at lake erie right and now they're both coaches and the guys on the team respect respect those two they listen to them and they're doing a really good job um and so i think that goes to show a lot about you know, their leadership abilities, you know, Ronnie and John. And then on top of that shows what type of kids we have on the team that, you know, Hey, you know, these are my coaches now. That's the way it is. And, you know, we're good with it. So, um, but I I think it takes a a, a special individual to be able to do that as well. Looking at the schedule, have you looked at the region? What region are you guys in this year? Are you in with UPJ? Are you in that like loaded sick region with only like three guys? Is that is that where they put you guys again this year? Yeah, I think we're region three is what it is, and yeah, it's 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 pretty loaded for sure. I, I don't like it. I don't like how they the, how they divide the like PA, Ohio team, Midwestern type deal, Eastern Midwestern. I don't. I don't I'm not for it because then I think it feel I feel like there's almost like a soft spot out west in my opinion. That's just my opinion, right? Like I, yeah, yeah. That's just me, me talking out loud. Um, it, it just, yeah, that creates more. I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to keep what wrestling alive in the West and not just crush those programs and bringing them over here and demoralize them. And I understand that, but like, it is a really tough region that they put you guys in. Sometimes it's Notre Dame College. Sometimes it's it's uh, Gannon. It's Mercyhurst. It's you guys. It, it, it kind of changes West to live. I mean it's you know ashland i mean because it changes then i don't know if they keep it exactly the same every year sometimes they shift teams in and out don't they yeah i believe you're right on that i mean obviously you know with me being new um i'm still you know figuring some things out but yeah i mean i'm pretty sure you're you're accurate on that and so um you know it is what it is um 
I do know, you know, Chris Draghi, you know, he was an All-American two years ago. And then last year, um, he actually didn't didn't qualify. And from what I heard, there was, I think, five guys there at that weight that were either All-Americans or returning national qualifiers. So two of them didn't go, you know, that's, um, nice. that's just how brutal the weight class was. So, um, you know, hey, it, it is what it is. Um, this is the position you're in. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're we're excited um, and we're, we're going to be ready to go and, and do whatever it takes to, to get guys to the national term and get them on the podium. Here's the big problem. Literally what you just pointed to and what you alluded to. Got a returning All-American in Dreggy. Dreggy doesn't make it, but you, you're coming from a system where there's been all these wild cards and you've been a coach of wild card guys, right? Either at Buffalo, Bloom, or CSU, you guys have had wild cards. Am I wrong? No, you're right. But at the end of the day, I mean, that's something we never relied on. You know, why, don't let it come down to that. You know, you don't want it to come down to that, then get your hand raised at the conference tournament, you know? Um, so, you know, how many times, you know, there, you know, even, even, you know, division one, how many times there's some guys sitting at home thinking that, you know, that sh they, they, that believe they should have got a wild card, you know, and other people believe they should have, and they don't, it, it, you know, and it is what it is. And that's why, it, you know, it's easy to say, right. But you can't let it come down to that. Um, so, you know, again, we're going to have to go there. We're going to have to perform at a high level, compete at a high level and do everything we can to, you know, get top three and, and push forward to that national tournament. Almost a decade of D1 coaching experience now on the D2. What do you think the biggest difference is going to be for you as far as how the competitions are going to work and how the season is going to go for you and what's going to be the biggest adjustment or difference for you from D1 to D2 NCA? Yeah, I, I think just understand the D2 model a little bit, you know, a um, little bit better, um, you know, because obviously it's a different qualifying system. So I want to make sure, you know, I'm making the schedule to where these guys, I'm setting these guys up you know, for the regional tournament and the national tournament. Right. Um, and it, it's a little bit different because a lot of D2 schools don't have that budget. Like we're not traveling way out West, right. Those teams aren't coming away, you know, all the way out here. So um, again, it, it's just a different situation. It's something that, you know, I, I've, you know, I, I've talked to, you know, Tony Gear a good amount. I've talked to coach Nelson, you know, a good amount, um, you know, and even uh, cold sponsor a little bit. And, um, you know, they've helped me out just kind of with some things, you know, with this transition and adjustment. Coach Breeze was amazing. Um, you know, that first month I, I, you know, when I took over, um, just kind of helped me through some things. So, um, yeah, th you know, there's some things that I got to, you know, figure out still. Um, but, you know, going to do everything I need to to uh, make that adjustment and make sure I put these guys in the best spot um, to achieve their goals. What do you say to a kid who's looking for a college? Maybe he thinks he's a, uh, you know, like a mid-major D1 guy, but ultimately you can find a spot for him at Lake Erie College. He's got the workout partners. What do you say to them to get them to come to Lake Erie College and at least visit and check it out? You have to look at the overall college experience, right? Not just athletics, but academics as well. Um, especially, like you said, with the athletic part, you know, hey, you know, you're going to have the training partners. All right? We have a good amount of coaches. All right. We have scholarships available. All right. We're able to stack academic, athletic, financial aid, which I know D1 is, too. However, all right, we're, we're in a really good spot where, you know, we're able to a lot of D1 schools were a little more financially feasible um, with that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, especially depending on what they want to go into major wise, you know, go into detail about that, about what we're able to offer academically and set these guys up. Lake Erie is really big on internships, um, you know, regardless of what the major is. So getting experience in your field. Um, cause let's face it, nobody's going pro. Right. So, um, you know, Hey, when you go apply for jobs, I mean, everybody's gonna have a college degree, but now you have experience in your field that you're going into, that's going to set you apart from everybody, everybody else right out the gate. Um, and that's something that we take serious at Lake Erie, um, you know, setting them up for their future. So again, I think, you know, with everything that we bring to the table, um, and, and on top of that, we wrestle, we're going to wrestle a really tough schedule. We're going to wrestle a decent amount of D1 teams. Um, whether it's at tournaments or duels, whatever it may be. Um, so we're, we're going to see that level of competition anyways. You got me fired up right at about an hour, man. You got me, you got me fired up to be there on uh, November 4th against John Carroll and Haywald guys. I'm kind of, I'm kind of excited about that. See the product you guys are going to put on the map and just see uh, how, you know, what, what the differences are going to be between what you did, what Breeze did. I was there for coach Hogan boom. And I, yeah, I'm just excited. He was the, pioneer of the program 
how about how close you guys are to all the competition, man? You can be within two hours. There's 40 schools to wrestle, right? And yeah. it, it, all, yeah. all the levels, right? Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's great. And like, you know, we wrestle, like we're talking about January 6th, you know, we wrestle um, Cleveland state at home and uh, Tony Guerra actually called me at Tiffin and said, Hey, we had a duel on Sunday, January 8th at home. And I don't know against who, who, who was against, but uh, they backed out. Like we're trying to pick up a team, you know, are you able to do that? Yeah, no problem. You know, we don't have to go out the night before or anything like that. You know, he was able to work it out time-wise where we can, you know, go up morning of and, you know, wrestle and then, you know, still come back. Um, so it, it, it's nice that, you know, you're able to, to, to do those things. He is like you, Coach Guerra is like you. He's a lunatic in that I think he's got like five kids. And I want to say he lives in like North Toledo, like almost in Michigan. And he drives to Tiffin every day. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah. He's done that a few times. He drew, When he was an assistant coach at Ashland, Tony's a good friend of mine. I mean, he drove like an hour and 20 minutes to Ashland every day. Um, he's got yeah, like five so, kids, doesn't he? He's got four or five kids. Uh, I think he's he's got three for sure. Yeah. Um, maybe four, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, dude, he told me one day. He's like, oh, yeah, my kids go to Whitmer. Washington local is what Lit Whitmer is. And I was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you. Wait, what you, how, how many miles do you drive? You're a lunatic. And then he was at Defiance, right? Yeah, he did at Defiance, and then he went over to Tiffin. Yeah, he's had a couple different changes, but, like, I think he's always lived in North Toledo, and I'm like, holy smokes. And the driving's a lot different there because it's, like, a lot of two-lane, highway, country, road type. Yep. Thing. Not, like, 480, 90, 271. It's not yeah. like that at all. It's not – like, dude, even if you look at, like, you know, like the Jennings Freeway, 176, still a real highway. Mm -hmm. Still a four yeah. lane, five lane highway, six lanes with merging, a lot of that. It's like, you know, 77, 71. Like they're not, a lot of their stuff's not like that over there. Like a lot, what he's doing, like when he mm -hmm. would drive to Ashland, it's all like back highways and back roads. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. God, he, he, that guy loves wrestling. Yeah, he does. All those guys do though. Everybody, that's what I like about, you know, even Colt Sponseller. Colt Sponseller moved back closer to where he's from in Millersburg. Mm -hmm. And now I think he's kind of like near where the farm is and where his family is. And I think that that's, what's cool about him because like the guy's passionate about wrestling. Ashland's got a good program. You got, you're passionate about wrestling. You guys are all really like in it straight up. Nobody's in D2 college wrestling to make a paycheck. Let's no. be honest. You're there because no. you love it. Exactly. exactly. I mean, that's what the wildest thing to me is like, if anybody thinks that I'm like, you know, nothing about, the D2, D3 model of wrestling and what these guys, these guys do it because they love it. Even D1. Yeah, I mean, no, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying yeah. that, but those guys are still getting paid more than you guys. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just wild to think about. Coach Boomer, do you have anything else for me? You got schedule talk. You got guys that you want to talk about anything. Is there anything else you want to talk to me about before we, before we shut this down and I go up and, uh, snuggle with my roommates upstairs no nah, man appreciate you having me on excited um that was one of the biggest things we want we wanted to change is you know live streaming our duels this year and they didn't have commentating i'm like i know a guy you got you know, a guy we gotta, we gotta change this we i know a guy with this. a big loud mouth who talks about wrestling i'll get him in he teaches a mile yeah. away dude you know like i'll have to drop by someday because i'll i'll uh see what you guys got to do and what you guys got going on and um we're always looking to get kids jobs. And I don't know if you guys got any jobs. I got to talk to somebody at Lake Erie College to see if we can get a student a job there. Cause that's my, my new thing is career-based intervention at Riverside. Have you seen how close we are to you? I know you're right there. Yeah. And it's wild because Riverside and Harvey are under a mile apart on the same road. See, I thought, I thought I saw you running on the track the other day down there. You did not um, see some... me running on the track. <laughs> I, will, I will be honest with you. I would not run on that track. I did. I ran. This summer, I took Scotty Burnett and his son, Gray, out west. Oh, yeah. I followed you guys. Yeah, we did a big trip, and we climbed Mount St. Helens, and I, I trained for it, right? I, I like, ran mm -hmm. three days a week. And now when I got back, I stepped on the scale, and I was, I was like, just took a week off. We went to Allegheny National Forest and ate hot dogs and Fruity Pebbles in the morning and didn't really do much. I was 263 pounds. I was like, ooh. Ooh, so then I got to get back into it. But now it's all soccer, man. It's all soccer. 
soccer and then my kid's going to open mats and then he's playing some baseball and the other kids playing soccer we're going from soccer to open mats tomorrow out here at kenston so it's That's about good stuff man yeah it's good stuff just keeping them active is awesome and then just keeping them around wrestling is the the biggest thing yeah. for me and not like a guy like you i mean look man you found a lot of success you didn't start until eighth grade yeah you That's know, not everybody's typical. got their own path That's no not typical. no you know that right yeah everybody's got their own path man you know and um so but that's all that's all really good stuff why again though did you go out for wrestling when you were a a 65 pound eighth grader didn't make the basketball team didn't make the basketball team i i listen when i hear that it makes my heart warm i'm like ooh, i like that i'm like seriously i like love it and i remember i think uh so I think I only won one match that year, that season. And then I started going to open tournaments after that. And I remember the first open tournament I went to, I, I don't know if, I think I went 0-2. I'm sure I did. And I remember like track starting the next day. I remember telling my dad, I'm like, I'm not doing track. I'm just doing all these open tournaments and I'm just going to keep wrestling. Like I just fell in love with it. Right. And that was all I did, you know, was just wrestle from there on out. 22 years later, look where we're at. Look where we're at. Talking to Zeb Miller. <laughs> I love it. Hey, Coach Boomer Fetchko, new head coach of Lake Erie College. Thank you for the time tonight on the Barbarian Hour. Go pick up some gears, some singlets. Check out Defense Soap, Guy Seiko, DefenseSoap.com. Coach Fetchko, stick around. Thank you for the time. November 4th versus John Carroll University, Lake Erie Storm versus John Carroll. What are they blue streaks? I forget what it was. John Carroll blue streaks, John Carroll blue streaks. All right. Thanks for the time and uh, stick around. All right. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Zeb. I appreciate it.